As I look back on my life And see where I come from I wonder if I'm ever gonna see the table turn Cause I've been way too long For way too long But I know somehow Somewhere I was back. I was backstage imitating uh, Carlotta. That was Queen Latifah singing. Yeah. You were imitating her backstage. Well, I've done it. Up, you know, when you're in the edit room, watching it. I know every movement that she's making. So I didn't see anything, but I heard it. So you were backstage, so, kind of like, ah, like yeah. doing. Okay. Exactly. I'm sorry for my impersonation. <laughs> Oh, all right. Uh, Lee, I love this show. I've seen the first episode. I watched the pilot, which is having a special uh, preview premiere uh, in, a, in a week, in, or on Wednesday, right? Wednesday. On Wednesday. Wednesday. And then it premieres for real January, January 2nd. Yeah. yeah. It's really scary a little bit because Empire comes on at that time. Mm -hmm. And what, they, what they're doing is they're pushing Empire up to 8 o'clock so that we can watch Star at 9 o'clock. So now... I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> right, are you worried like what's, like what's gonna happen to your babies? Well, that's what happens when you have two, yeah. when you have twins. <laughs> so I'm like, oh. The cast of Empire's gonna be like, what about us, Lee? What's going on with us? You tell me. They're gonna feel like the sort of unwanted children at this yeah. point, or the, or the first child. Yeah, I, I, it's, 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 it's confusing. Yeah. But it'll be a full night of entertainment, that's for sure. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that I loved about the pilot right away is that I got the vibe from Star, the same vibe that I got the first, the first time I watched the premiere of Empire. It felt fresh, it felt new, and it also felt like an exploration of a world that is sort of rarely explored on television, while at the same, same time still sort of feeding into a lot of the things that we really like from soap opera and from mm. television. Can you talk about doing that? Because you explore very real issues, but sometimes I think from a lens that is from a sort of classic TV lens. Yeah. Um, I wanted to do something that was different that from Empire. I didn't, I didn't, I knew that no matter what, I was gonna be compared to Empire. And I thought, oh my God, what, how do I even begin to tell the story of this girl group and not have it compared to Empire? And so I just, just, I did a radical change in, 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 in storytelling and filmmaking and style and tone to uh, tell a, a different story, mm -hmm. a completely different story. It comes over, like it's night and day. Whereas if, if um, when Danny and I made Empire, we were, I, we were thinking King Lear uh, meets Dynasty where this is more like Norman Lear and the good times. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know? Yeah. No. But it's still you in many ways. It still has your sensibility, I think. Yeah. So in that way, it's, it's, it's sometimes it's, it's hard not to compare. I mean, I wouldn't say compare it to Empire, but I would say feel similar tones, oh, similar vibes. Yeah, I think that we, yeah, because it's the same filmmaker. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's the same filmmaker for sure. And I think that, you know, my stamp at where I'm at, how I, how I breathe or how I dance or how I eat um, and how I tell story is pretty much the same. It's the type of story that's told differently. So where did you find the story of Star? <laughs> where did I find the story of Star? I found the story of Star um, I was gonna do Valley of the Dolls. Anybody know that book, Valley of the Dolls? Yeah, I was gonna do that a long time. Are you time. a Valley of the Dolls fan or beyond the Valley of the Dolls fan? Which one? Valley of the Dolls. Violet, you stick only. with Valley? Yeah, only. Really? Yeah, for sure. I'm a big Beyond the Valley guy. Yeah, are you? I love Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. Got that criterion. That says something about you. <laughs> that really, he's a, you a twisted piece of work. It's a bro. twisted movie. You, it is a twisted He's a twisted movie. piece. Anybody seen that movie, Beyond the Valley? He's a twisted motherfucker right here. <laughs> I love what? you already. 
I can't get that. That's a lot. Yeah. Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. Valley of the Dolls is enough. Um, anyway, so I was going to do Valley of the Dolls as a television series. And, oh, God, was I allowed to curse? You can curse, yeah. Oh, hey. um, I, I work at Fox. Um, um, I was going to do Valley of the Dolls. That didn't happen. Um, uh, and so, and I, and I had been, after Precious, uh, Queen Latifah and I wanted to do a musical about um, Paris is Burning. And so, um, and I remember when I was a kid, uh, when I was a young kid, I stole my mom's car. I was 16, and I stole my mom's El Dorado. And I drove from Philadelphia to uh, Manhattan to see Dreamgirls. And I remember the original production. <laughs> and I am telling you, ooh, ooh, you gonna. And so, and I swear to God, I got tingles down my ass. It was like, it was tingles, tingles, tingles. And I, re and I wanted people to feel the same way that I felt when I saw that show. It changed my life. It was the reason why I got into it. I had never seen black people like in glitter and what the fuck, you know? So for me, um, I wanted Americans to feel what, um, pa how P Paris is Burning influenced me, how Valley of the Dolls influenced me, and how Dreamgirls influenced me. And, and also to talk about um, race relations in America today, because I believe that we are at civil war. And I think that anybody that's in denial, anybody that is, has not embraced that, it's in denial. So um, I wanted to talk about these three girls struggling to get to the top, doing whatever, and a little bit of John Waters. Anybody see John Waters' female trouble? Oh, yeah. First 15 minutes where they rob, they'll steal, <laughs> they'll have sex with you, <laughs> they'll, they'll kill your ass, anything to get to the top. So it's a little bit of all that combined in, in, in Stark. Can I ask you a question? Can you, but I can't curse, because it's Fox. Can you imagine a world <laughs> 10 years ago, 15 years ago, where you could bring together on a major television network, Dream Girls, John Waters, and Valley of the Dolls? And Paris and is also burning. discuss race and relations. Paris and Paris is, Paris is burning. I mean, Paris, burning, Paris is burning alone 15 years ago, I don't think would make it on, would, would yeah. make it on one of the major networks. You know, it was never given its due it was not even nominated in, in, in for, for, it was wow. It wasn't nominated for best documentary? No. If you haven't seen Paris is Burning, it's one of the, the greatest documentaries of all time. all time. You will weep from minute one till the yeah. final minute. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Um, but that didn't answer your question. What was your question? No, but you got me on a soapbox for Paris is Burning, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my question was, could you have imagined a world 10, 15 years ago where you could bring all of these influences together on a major, a major TV network? No. What do you think has changed that I has think allowed that? that? Empire, you, they, 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 let, they let me out my cage. <laughs> Don't let this black man out the cage, baby. Because, <laughs> you know, I just started, you just get revved up. And I think that we are, um, we're in some dangerous times right now. And, and, um, and I want to escape. And um, I want America to escape. So um, I uh, created this world where we, we're, we can escape through dreams, through magic, and yet we zing you every now and then with uh, the realities of uh, Black Lives Matter and transgenders matter. <laughs> and so it's a, uh, yeah. Why is that important for you? Because this is something that I think we see also in, in Empire and maybe even somewhat in, in Precious at times. I mean, she's trying to escape and she has her fantasies of, that are an escapism, I think as well for the audience when you're watching that movie. Why it's so important to you, I think, as a filmmaker and in your work to create an escapism, but at the same time really hit people with reality at times within there, and especially sometimes your reality mm -hmm. as you know it. Why is that so important for you as a filmmaker? Because I think that life isn't um, white or black. I don't believe we're all good or all bad. I think, I know I wake up every morning and I try to be the best man I can. And I always fuck up. And because I'm human. And I, I would be lying to you guys to say, uh, I don't fuck up. But I get up the next day and I do, I really do. I try to be the best man I can every day. And, um, and I'll miss, and some days I don't make mistakes. So I think that we live in a gray area and I think that um, I explore that gray area. I like to explore that gray area with faces that we never see, but that we see every day, but aren't, aren't represented on television. 
and voices that we hear every day, but we don't see or hear on television. When you created Empire, you were showing faces that aren't seen every day on television, and the show's the biggest hit on TV. Mm. Did you feel a certain, kind, a certain amount of vindication for that, no. in terms of what's allowed I to be shown? I didn't even think we were going to get picked up. I didn't think you're the biggest hit. On I TV. didn't know, and now, and that's really crazy because now I'm all nervous because you know they built you up to tear you down. So well, this is gonna be the biggest flop. I don't know. It's like ah, the pressure's the heat is on. So um, you got Empire Lee here. Go ahead, make another show. Let's see what happens. You stupid ass. <laughs> um, Luckily, the show's really good though. Thank you for that. Yeah. I like the. I love this show. I think that America's ready for this show. I think that Empire has uh, paved the way for Star. I don't think that people would have been able to embrace Star had they not seen Empire first. I don't think. Now, uh, the show has Benjamin Bratt in it, and he plays a sort of talent manager who's down on his luck, sort of trying to recover a little bit. He's got some demons. I talked to Benjamin Bratt here, and he, he thought that the character was a little loosely based on he your time. He didn't think. He knew. I told him. <laughs> but your time as a talent manager in L.A., which you apparently managed Michael Shannon. I, he yeah. let that slip. I, I didn't know time. that. Uh, yeah, I managed many actors. Uh, Loretta Devine, as a matter of fact, from Dreamgirls. Um, um, yeah, I, I, I lived um, in the back of a church when I, I didn't go to film school. And so I went, uh, I, went I, I came out to Hollywood literally with $7 and dreams. And I lived in the back of a church and I directed theater. And um, I started managing some of the actors that were in a part of the, these uh, one acts. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so the rest is history. Um, he plays a character, he plays me, uh, what it was like uh, for me when I first arrived in trying to find myself being addicted to drugs, um, not loving myself. Um, he plays me, he plays me, and he's selling talent, um, not knowing that he is the artist himself. Oh, really? That's a part of the, uh, an element of the show that I haven't seen. When did you realize that you were an artist yourself? Or did you always sort of feel I, that I didn't you just know. hadn't given I up? Didn't, I didn't know I was directing theater. You know, my first, uh, I didn't know that I was a director. All I knew is that I liked directing. And I didn't know it because there weren't, it was pre-Spike Lee and post the black exploitation era. So there really wasn't any heroes. I didn't have any like role models to say, okay, this is what you want to do. You know what I mean? This is, this is who you are. And so all I, I was just drawn to, when I was five, no, I'm lying, when I was eight, eight, I went, the first full book that I read was it from the public library in Philadelphia, West Philadelphia, and it was called Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? I took the book home, I read it from cover to cover, and then I had my neighbors read it out. And so I knew that I would, <laughs> I guess I that sort of, I sort of knew how to direct, that I was going to be a director from there. Were you kind of like, you over here, and you right Martha here, and now George, you're George, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So, so I think, um, and I learned how, how to direct on set when I was from managing actors. Wow. When do you feel like you first gave into your art, artistic, own artistic impulses, or at least knew that you were finally giving into your own artistic impulses, that you were when I got tired of, When I got tired of telling African-American actors, I'm sorry, I don't have this job. You can't get this job because you can't play a doctor. I said, mm -mm, it's time for me to, to, to change up the game. And so um, I optioned a property, and it was my first movie, and uh, it was Monsters Ball. And that was, I was like, you know what? It's, I'm going to make my own destiny. I'm not going to sit here and wait for Hollywood to um, do anything for me. So I, I find it offensive often when the people say, oh, woe is me. Hollywood owes me. Hollywood don't owe you shit. You owe you shit. You go out and get your own, because that's what I've done all my life. You know? Um. You said that, uh, you know, the faces on Empire are faces that we've never seen, and one of the reasons that you started becoming an artist is to sort of give African Americans parts that you saw them having, you have to, you had to tell them they were getting turned down for. Yeah. You also so said I created that, Cookie, a drug dealer. Yeah. <laughs> you, so. Well, I thought it was funny. You also say, though, that, you know, in many ways, Empire came out in Obama's America. It came out in what many people referred to as a post-race America, which we know is not necessarily true. But that's how people refer to it. And Star itself, you said, is depicting a kind of civil war among race relations. What do you think the future of being able to have shows like this and have shows talked about 
talked about with a certain amount of rationalism is in Trump's America. I don't think that we are going to be able to... Uh, I don't know that we're going to be able to do what it is that I'm going to, that I want to do. I think we, I'm going to have it zipped up pretty soon. I think a lot of artists will. I mean, even, uh, he's made it very clear that it's his way or the highway. Even in the, in the, just in the aftermath of the election and there was all this media coverage of, you know, the white working class, not getting enough coverage, no one's speaking well enough for them. It's all bullshit, by the way. Um, the head of ABC came out and said, well, I guess we have to make more shows about the white working class because we're not paying attention to them enough. I mean, this is the network that has Blackish, Fresh Off the Boat, all these wonderful shows exploring communities that are rarely talked about on television. How does that make That's just the beginning, my love. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's only just begun. I'm glad you have a sense of humor about it. You like. gotta have a sense of humor about it. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Should I move on? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about Star let's talk about the other character star. Talk about Queen Latifah. You, you love, love, love. She's love, the best. Love, love. Yeah. I mean, what I wanted to do too was also I wanted to make, you know, I know it sounds sort of corny, but I wanted to, I grew up in the church. And I want literally. <laughs> and um I wanted to make the church popular again. I think that probably the reason why we're in the state that we're in is because uh, the millennials have this laissez-faire uh, um, attitude, and, 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 and there, is, there isn't a sense of spirituality. And I, even saying it makes it sound sort of corny, you know? I grew up believing in God. I, I grew up, uh, and so I really wanted to bring um, the church back into the homes of America because I think that um, that's what's missing right now. Yeah. That's incredible. So, so Queen Latifah was a, like imagine if Cookie was like, had, had become a born again Christian. That's who Queen Latifah plays. Her name is Carlotta. <laughs> I'd imagine, I'd Carlotta. imagine she herself is a world of contradiction as well and struggles with her own demons on the show. I haven't seen Carlotta? that much in the first, yeah. Oh, for sure. She's fucking the pastor. <laughs> How did you go about casting your lead in, in Star? She's, I love her. She, She's um, beautiful. Yeah, she, well, they're all leads. It's, first yeah. of all, it's not, it's really an ensemble. It happens to be named Star because they all want to be stars. And, um, and so, her name happens to be Star. Um, she came into my office. I, I, I wrote this girl who was just, who this brazen blonde, you know, chick that was a female version of Divine, a beautiful female version of Divine, hmm? I guess. People know who Divine is? Yeah, I mean, a, be a beautiful female version of Divine. I, you know, I wanna make sure I'm very clear. Jude, because I know you're watching this. Um, <laughs> and she came in and she was that, and she could sing, and it was really hard to find um, this chick who could sing. It's hard to find any actors who can sing, act, and dance. So uh, she came in and was able to do all, all three, and uh, her sister is half black and half white. Uh, Simone, played by Brittany, there to the left. And we explore race, you know, what happens when you have a white sister um, and your other sister is half black and half white, um, and um, and they're separated, uh, and, and one sister stays in an all black. Uh, we, we explore the atrocities of the foster care system too. So because she's white, she gets to stay with, as it would be, with a white family, and because her other sister is black, she stays with a black family. This is happening today in America. So we really explore that, and what, what does it all mean? because we're all one at the end of the day. And then at the same time, the other, the other girl who's a part of the group is rich. So you explore- The black girl's rich. Class. Yeah, the black girl comes in with Chanel. <laughs> yeah, literally, Tom Ford, it's, I think it's his first time um, dressing uh, for television ever. 
and, and Chanel too. So it's a very big, um, that's a big, big coup for me. I'm very excited about it. Yeah, how did you work that one out? Tom Ford's very, very picky. Magic. <laughs> and if I told you it wouldn't be, would it? Oh, that's it. That's it. <laughs> We're leaving that one. How important for it is, is it for you when you're writing characters for TV to find their contradictions? That to me seems to be where you are, where you are sort of at your best. It's like this character is this thing, but she's also these other things as well that totally contradict this thing that you see as part of her surface. Because aren't you a contradiction? I know I am. Are, are you? I think so. Yeah, we all are. And I think that you know, we all have to think that we have to fit into a box, that we have to be explained, but we don't have to be explained. And we're perfect in that contradiction. We are perfect human beings, each and everybody out here. We're perfect as we are. And I think that we try to fit into somebody else's box. And that shit, that's whack. That's not true. That's just not true. So I, I believe in contradictions. Once you've created a show and it's a successful show like Empire, at what point do you feel comfortable enough sort of creating another show with that while still devoting the attention that you had devoted to Empire before, or do you not devote the attention anymore because you have a new show? That's a very tricky question that I'm not going to answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sorry, gonna... sorry, sorry, Taraji, <laughs> I tried. <laughs> uh, I'm a, it's a, they're both my kids, and so it's really, they both need feeding. But as the original creator, you are kind of sort of setting up, I mean, television in many ways... It's, it's about a, letting go. It's a, it's a well-oiled it's machine, it becomes. It it's, yes, for sure, but you need that, you know, Star needs my undivided uh, attention, as did Empire, it's first season. And then, you know, we start, people start getting, the, uh, the actors know, they know who they are, it takes them a season to know who they are. Uh, and then the writing team needs to be, to know, so that they're, to know what's in our heads. Um, and so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's open it up to the audience for questions. Who has questions out there, right here. Wow, super excited. So I do this thing with 11 kids and we run around the silly city with DSLRs, like filming everything. And how do you get, well, what would you suggest for me to get them to want to write about what they shot? How would, how, say that again? Like how would, I, how would I tell them to write about what they shot? Like how there's would you 11 suggest, kids. Yeah, like how would you suggest me? Teaching kids how to write. You tell them to write? What you, you do, I'm, you do. I, I work at ghetto film school. I do get, you, you're, you, you're, oh, David or Russell and I work at this uh, film school um, called uh, the ghetto film school. And it's, you know, it's about, this is not my gift. People, that's the problem with Hollywood. A lot of people think, oh, I created this. Oh, this is mine. This ain't yours. This is God's, you're a vessel and you are there to pass it on, and it's not yours to keep. That's the trick. The, it'll keep coming if you give it, if you have to give it back. So part of, uh, I get as much um, excitement from teaching as I do um, from directing and or writing. Next question. Hi. Um, you've worked with a lot of big names in the industry, Queen Latifah and Taraji P. Henson, two of my favorites. Um, between the two of them, what is one defining factor you see in the both of them that has made them who they are in this industry as big name actresses? Mm -hmm. Can I add to that question? Yeah. Charismatic. What is one defining thing as well that makes them as charismatic as they are? Because I think both of them can just, I could watch them read the phone book on screen. I think they're both kind spirits. I think that they both have had the, um, the, they've been knocked around through life and in Hollywood, um, just like me. And I, and I, and I think that, the, and, it, and it shows in their work, in their work ethic, and, and, um, and in their person. They're kind spirits. Next question. Hi, Mr. Daniels. It's really awesome to be in your presence. I just wanted to say first that um, for my college essay into film school, I wrote about Precious being the movie that I watched the most times in my life. So, yeah, I think Thank about you. 10. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, I wanted to say as an inspiring filmmaker and storyteller Ten myself. And times you watched that movie? Throughout, throughout the years, not like in one What's sitting. Wrong that with would, you? I, many I mean, things. Where do woo. I start? 
Um, but really, though. I thought I was. The That's more times than I watched it. I know. Right? You're welcome. But thank you. I wanted to say, basically, as someone who's inspiring to go into the entertainment industry as a filmmaker, storyteller, director, etc., my mission too is to tell these untold narratives. And I really wanted to know from what you've experienced, what is the most challenging part about that? Because I'm sure it's not a very easy road to travel. Telling the untold narratives? Yeah. Most challenging part? Yes. Um, there isn't. Because I, each day is a challenge for me to, you know, each of these stories that I tell are um, very challenging. And I think that you just, the fact that you said that says that you want to make challenging shit. And that in itself is your answer right there that you know that it's challenging. Yeah. Lee, I have to let you go. The show uh, has a special premiere this Wednesday, right? Yes. After Empire? Yes. After it's Empire. so fantastic. So make sure you watch Empire. You gotta watch Empire at eight, just for this Wednesday, and then Star comes on in Empire's time. Lee Daniels, thank you so much, Lee.